From the very beginning, bow hunting has been etched deep into our DNA. We know what it means to have the fire of archery burning inside. We know the heart-pounding anticipation of waiting for that monster buck. We share the breathtaking excitement when we hear elk bugles in the mountains. We're a band of brothers and sisters who share the passion. Just like you, it drives us. We're born to bow hunt. Folks, when you're out west and you can hear the bull elk screaming in the mountainsides, you know fall is in the air. Hi everybody, I'm Heath Painter and welcome to this week's show. This week, folks, we got an exciting bow hunt lined up for you. We're going elk hunting with Strawberry Creek Outfitters and I promise you, this is an adventure of a lifetime. Don't go anywhere, we'll take you there. Anytime you pick up a bow and you take on the challenge of bow hunting, you know, you have taken on a huge challenge. You know, not only do you have to get close, but you have to battle so many different elements in order to get close to those animals. You know, when you talk about terrain, you've got the, the tough, rugged terrain, you've got the, the, the topography, you've got the trees, you've got brush, you've got so many different things that you have to eliminate in order to get close to these animals, to get into the security zone. And then you add in the wind factor. When you're out west in these mountains, you never know really what the wind's gonna do. You always gotta be constantly checking the wind. You gotta know what the wind's doing or you're not gonna be able to get close. The wind is constantly either swirling or you got thermals coming up, you got thermals coming down. You gotta know what the wind's doing in order to get close to these animals. But when you're bow hunting elk, these big, massive, beautiful animals, I tell you what, these animals can cover the terrain. They can move fast. You better be prepared, you better be in shape because if not, they're gonna leave you in the dust. There's several different techniques that you can use to find elk. You know, you can sit on water holes, let them come to you. You can listen for the bugles, go to them. You know, watching the trails, watching terrain, glassing from a distance. You know, there's so many different techniques that are successful when you're bow hunting these elk. But when you're up on a high ground and you can see down in the valley and you can hear where the elk are moving and when they're bugling and where they're going to, that's one of the best strategies. Get up high, let your optics do the walking for you. When you find the bull or find a bugle you want to go after, then that's when you move. Strawberry Creek Outfitters is owned and operated by Russell Stacy from Natchitoches, Louisiana. We've got probably some of the best elk hunting around here in Northwest Colorado. I personally, I believe that uh, we've got big bulls, a lot of elk, um, some good country, and the way we try to run things is to make it uh, a, a good hunt for uh, uh, not only the first group, but the very last group that leaves. A hunter can expect to see a lot of animals here. Um, we, we have a, a real good elk herd. They stay in here pretty much uh, 
all summer long. I've got video on a, a lot of the bulls. You know, it's fun to watch them progress, you know, uh, from just starting their brow times to finishing up and, and raking their horns up on the mountain and stuff. Uh, we have some real quality bulls and, uh, and abundance of bulls. This morning, man, the bulls are screaming everywhere. We've got five and six bulls screaming up on the hillside. We've got a bull that's about 150, 200 yards away. We're making our move, we're making our plan of attack. We're getting closer and closer and closer. My cameraman had been with Jason and they started to move closer and closer and closer. And I had bulls down to my right. And I had this one opportunity. There was an absolutely huge elk trail cutting right down to the elk. I knew that I could slip down into range, get inside all that bugling get inside all those elk and that's what I did. I called my cameraman back down to me. We started moving in folks and I bet you we went about maybe 75 yards and all of a sudden elk started coming from everywhere. We had a bull down below me to my right and I'm getting set up with that recurve and here he comes. He comes straight at me. He kicks his head back, starts bugling <laughs> right at 20 yards facing me and I almost feel like he's burning a hole through me at 20 yards. I, I had a shot, I mean, it was a quarter and two shot. I decided not to take it. That right there, folks, man, I, I didn't know what to do because we had elk coming from everywhere. Folks, I had an elk that ran up to me and when she finally saw us, she hit the brakes. When she hit the brakes, she blew dust up onto my boots. That right there is up close and in your face hunting right there. That's what bow hunting's about. Oh, folks. talk about exciting oh my gosh that was exciting we had four to five different bulls around us screaming I had one bullet 20 yards I couldn't shoot had another bull behind me at like 10 yards I couldn't shoot at him and then a monster bull stepped out in front of me he was raking what a giant a giant bull he was up here growling for probably 45 minutes to an hour maybe Today, we're switching gears a little bit. Joe's got a little bit different strategy. You know, we've got this whole ridge side is just full of elk. What they're doing is in the mornings, we got a, a valley full of water holes, full of water. And what the bulls are doing, they're hanging down in those bottoms with those cows, you know, all night long feeding and what have you. When it starts breaking day, they start filtering back up through the, through the mountainsides and up through the hills, and they bed on these ridges. But in the afternoons, what they like to do is they like to filter back down through there they're working back down through these ridges and they're checking for cows. We're right in the middle of the rut. So what Joe's strategy is, is we get down there early enough, get set up on one of these wallows or one of these water holes, and we could possibly get on a big monster bull early in the day. And then in the evening, all those other elk are gonna be filtering back through, bringing more bulls with them. That's our strategy. Get in the bottom and wait for these big bulls. We no sooner got down to that bottom and Joe's like, Heath, there is a monster bull right there. You know, we started stalking, you know, and I glassed him, and this thing is absolutely gigantic. That's a good bull, Joe. He's headed right over to that, those two tanks. You, you guys go ahead and go ahead of me. Francis and I will stay back here. Call. See if you can get in on him. But ease, ease up in there because he's got to be right in okay. there. This is one of the biggest bulls I've had an opportunity to shoot at with my bow. And I tell you what, you talk about knocking, my knees were knocking, my heart was racing, I was rattled.
<laughs> you know, what can you say? I, I had the range finder, I know how far he was. You know, the bull jumped, the arrow went over his back, the arrow just didn't connect, you know, bottom line. You know, you might be able to shoot targets all day long, but what you don't realize is these oh, animals man. can move. I missed him. Shot right over his back. Dang, on it. What a monster bull. What a sometimes we're winners and sometimes we're not. But, you know, there's no experience like that. You know, even though I missed, that experience of shooting at that bull and being able to hunt a bull of that caliber, you know, there's no feeling like that. That right there is an experience that's going to last me a lifetime.